This video is an overview of Orion LX security features. Here's what we'll cover. Strong passwords, remote authentication, firewall, encryption, and logging. Okay, we've just logged into the Orion, and we're going to take a look at to the settings tab, the first item on that list over there that says user. You'll see we have two accounts. I'm signed in right now under that Novatech account. We're going to create a third one. Below, where we have the option for login type, I'm going to leave that at menu. What that does is allow remote access to the Orion when the Orion picks up that remote connection, either it's through the front serial port or it can be over the secure shell. We also have the option to log into the Linux command prompt on the Orion, and that would be using the text option. If we wanted to come through the Orion to get uh, access to Switzer devices, then we have the, uh, the IDOM login type. For this account, however, we, we just want to go with the default menu. We'll also type the password in a second time for verification. There are different groups. In the manual, you will find very good uh, explanations for each one of these groups. We can put uh, each user into separate control groups, which means that we can control their level of access to uh, some of our HMI screens based on uh, some of these settings. And when I get to the bottom of this, you'll see the add user. We want to press that button in order to store uh, the information in the Orion. And now I see that I've actually created a demo account. If I take a look at the groups that are set for the Novatech account, you'll see that there are quite a few pri privileges granted uh, to this account. Uh, it is considered an admin level account. So it has the ability to do things, particularly with the HMI, that allow us to force values, inputs. Uh, here we can force output values. Other things that we can do is allow this particular user to pass through to the Switzer devices. Network security, uh, this user can actually make some changes uh, to some of the network security features. Now that we've created a user, uh, we want to go into the authentication tab where we can set up some of the password rules, show you some of the remote authentication support we have available. First thing we see is that we have lockout rules. And those lockout rules give you the ability to set the maximum number of bad attempts before that account is locked out. We also can make the lockout either permanent or we can set uh, some, some delay values that would reset after a certain number of seconds. We also have the ability here to enforce password rules. This is important because we can actually require that all of the passwords be constructed in a certain way. We can determine the number or the length of the password that all users uh, would have to use. We can require that there be a certain number of digits, a certain number of upper or lowercase special characters. We can even control password history which means that uh, we can require that the password actually change several times before it gets reused. And so we just can't go from password slash one to password slash two. We actually require that a certain number of characters be different from one password to the next. We also uh, see here that there is radius authentication, and that basically takes the authentication role from the LX level and pushes it to the corporate level. If you have IT groups that have authentication servers and we communicate with those authentication servers, LDAP performs a similar remote authentication service. Let's talk about firewall. NERC SIP requires that we have a firewall in products like uh, the Orion. Firewall works by blocking all traffic attempting to come in or all traffic that reaches the front port of the Orion. So we, we have this big wall, but what we do is we punch holes in this firewall and we systematically let through very specific types of sessions. So for example, I'm going to set up a rule that will allow only secure HTTP traffic to come in and to go out of my Orion. So I add a rule and then I'm going to go over and I'm going to edit that rule. And so it go over to a set of preset uh, protocols. And in this case, I'm going to use HTTPS. And you'll notice here that it automatically populated the port number. So you don't have to remember the port number. And I'm going to do the same thing from the destination, same port. 
if the port number is not on our preset list, that's not to bother. You can actually type in a port uh, if you want, uh, if you want to have a, a special port that you use. And then finally, we have to select a protocol. In this case, TCP. The choice is UDP. And then I'm going to give it a name. So I submit that, and I have one rule. So basically, coming into the Orion, I'm going to allow HTTPS. Now I need to do the same thing. I need to allow my Orion to send the same HTTPS protocol. So I'm going to add an outgoing rule that I need to address it twice. So here by default, it's going to actually do some things for me. For this one, I'm going to say, well, if the session is already established here, then go ahead. Uh, it's a little easier here because it's actually pulling in uh, some information I already have. So HTTPS is, uh, is what's default there, and the same thing uh, for the destination. And I'm going to save this. So I basically have one input rule, one output rule, and that is pretty much how the firewall works. Now we can be, we can get uh, very complicated. We can allow access based on an IP address. We can allow access based on a range. So maybe we have a range of, of engineering workstations that we want to have uh, allow access to the Orion. Let's talk about encryption. Inside the Orion LX, we have a feature called key management. These are encryption keys that are used for the HTTPS sessions, as well as we have the ability to log in uh, to the Orion using a secure shell type of access, which is sort of telnet access that has encryption so it's called secure shell here you will see that we have the ability to have multiple keys within the orion by default the orion has one key we have a random number generator that creates these keys you can see here we have the ability to create new keys we can control the key bit length we can add passphrase protection we can create self keys or self signatures on the keys but we also have the ability to bring in keys that come from certificate authorities but we can manage those keys both the ones that are created internal to the orion as well as those that are purchased for more secure online transactions next we'll cover logs logging is essential for critical cyber security devices like orion these are the log files that will be used for mandatory NERC report. If I take a look at what's contained inside each one of these lines, right away I can see here that a user called Novatech logged in from this IP address, 172 here, this IP address, on 6th of May, gives a time, and also shows what web page this user access and as I scroll down the screen I, I have the most recent log at the top and as I go down through you'll see uh, here for example security key management which was the uh, screen that we just left not long ago so these logs cannot be modified they are time stamped and then have the detail that you see these can be downloaded as CSV files as well. So you can actually get those out of the Orion, place them into, for example, a spreadsheet and, and do some sorting and some analysis. Finally, we'll talk about non-secure protocols. If you go to settings tab and then find your way to services, you will see that we have the ability to enable Telnet, FTP, as well as the non-secure version of HTTP. By default, these are off. 